Hey guys, and welcome back to the full one on tech. I'm on my own today, but that's okay. We're gonna keep this train moving because today we're talking about emulation for the ROG Ally. Really any Windows handheld, and we're going to do it with Emu Deck. Now, if you watch our emulation video for the Steam Deck, we used Emu Deck as well. So if you're interested, we'll put that in a link down below. But we really like Emu Deck a lot. It's a great tool for getting emulation set up on your device because it's very easy. It pretty much does everything. It downloads all your emulators, sets up all your directories, and configures each emulator for you. So let's jump right in. So first, go ahead and bring up a browser of choice. Mine is Chrome. And go to emudeck.com. Apparently, I can't type today. All right, now once you get there, so one thing to note is EmuDeck for Windows is still technically in beta, so it's not free and available for the general public. So in order to get EmuDeck for Windows, you do need to join their Patreon page. So once you get to EmuDeck, the easiest way to find it is just do a Control F and then search for Patreon, enter. Um, and you want to get to the section where it says introducing early access. So again, it's early access. Uh, you have to become a patron. So best way to do it is just go down here, click on become a patron. And once you bring up this page, you'll see the tiers. So the tier that you want is the early access tier. So that is $350 a month. Now you could spend the $350, get the files you know, cancel the membership, but the tool readily checks and logs you into Patreon to make sure you are a member and in order to continue to use it throughout the months and to get updates for it and everything, you do want to stay a member. Hopefully it'll come out of early access soon and be free um, for the public like it is for, you know, for the Steam Deck, but right now it's still in early access. So if you want to proceed, go ahead and click on join. We're already members, so I'm just going to click over to EmuDeck. So under Memberships, click on EmuDeck once you're signed up. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see Early Access Link. So this is where you're going to get your file to so go ahead and get EmuDeck for Windows installed. Now, I also want to note that I am doing this on my Windows PC just because we already have it downloaded on the ROG Ally. But the steps and everything is going to be almost the, the same. Anytime there's a deviation, I'll let you know. But once you're here and you see the early access links, the file that you want is this one right here, emudeck ea windows.bat. So it's a batch file. It's going to go ahead and download all your emudeck dependencies and everything you're going to need. So go ahead and click on that. And then it'll download. Then I just bring up the file location it's in. And then somebody's in, in the download folder. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click it. Now, you'll likely get a pop-up like this, Windows protected your PC. Um, in order to actually get it to run, just click on more info and then click on run anyway. So now you'll see it's going through, adding all the dependencies and everything. You, you might even get a pop-up or two with your antivirus. All right, I went ahead and just disabled my antivirus for 10 minutes. It's the easiest thing to do, so you might need to do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and try to execute it again, and it should work just fine. All right, so yeah, now it's starting to download things. So just sit back and wait for this to finish. Now... It'll start to also download a couple of things that it needs. Git is one of them, 7-zip uh, if you don't have that. And if you don't already have Steam installed and downloaded installed, it'll also do that uh, as well. So if anything pops up, just go ahead and hit yes. So now it's installing Git. We already have 7-zip, but it'll install 7-zip, like I said, if you don't have that. And again, if you get any pop-ups, just make sure you hit yes. And now it's downloading Emudeck. 
All right, so once that's all done, you'll see MU deck is up here and it says login to Patreon. So again, it needs to verify that you are a member. So at this point, go ahead and make sure you're logged in. So click on login and you're gonna link your MU deck to Patreon. So do that here. All right, and next it's gonna give you a token to plug into MU deck. So when you get this, just go ahead and hit allow. And now it's giving you this token. So you can click on copy to clipboard. You can get out of that and go ahead and paste that token in. And then hit check token. So now it's building all the back end stuff. All right, now. It says, welcome to MU Deck for Windows. Now there is easy mode and custom mode. We would generally do custom mode, but we're just trying to show you guys the easiest way to go about it and click on the mode that most people would choose. So we're gonna go ahead and just go with easy mode here. So go ahead and click on that and then click continue. Now you wanna select your ROM directory. So wherever you want your ROMs and emulators and everything to be saved, you want to go ahead and select that drive. So for the ROG Ally, if you have a micro SD card installed, like you, you might want to save it to that drive, or you could just save it to your C drive. In this case, for me right now, I'm just going to do C. So click on the drive and then click OK. And as you can see, it's saying collecting drive names. This will take a few seconds, so just be patient and wait on this. All right, so that one ended up taking a while. I'm not sure why it didn't go away, but basically, as you can see here, select your drive, C drive, that's the drive I selected, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click on next. Now, here is where you'll see it says select your device, okay? So obviously, if you're doing this for the ROG Ally, you wanna select the ROG Ally. You also see a couple other um, devices here. For me, I'm doing this on my Windows PC, so I'm just gonna do Windows PC. But again, if you're actually doing this on the ROG Ally, that's what you wanna click on. And once you click on that, go ahead and click on Finish. I know for us, when we actually installed this on the ROG Ally, we got a window before this where it showed all the emulators and you were able to select the ones that you maybe didn't want to install or the ones you did wanna install. Um, by default, it'll just install all of them and that's what it's doing in this case. So I recommend it just in case, you know, you, you might do some other systems down the road. All your emulators will already be there and ready to go. All right. So now you'll see it says configure autosave. So this will allow your game state to be saved on exit. So you're able to jump right back in it when you come back in to the game. So you can decide whether or not you want to turn this on or on or off, we turn it on, and then you can go ahead and click on continue. And here is, so configure retro achievements. So this is kind of cool if you like the trophies and achievements that you get with like PC games and stuff like that. You can also do it with retro games. So if you want, you can sign up for this. We're not doing that, but if you want it, you can sign up, come back, put in your username and password, and go ahead and hit log in. But for right now, we're just gonna hit skip. And here is where you can configure your game bezels. So whether or not you want bezels or not, you can have bezels and have like some nice little artwork on the side. For us, we just like it plain Jane, black borders. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that off and hit next. And now we can configure the aspect ratio for our systems. So again, we like to keep things as they were meant to be. So for most of these, we're gonna go ahead and click on the original aspect ratio. So four by three for this system, same with the Nintendo Entertainment System, but you can see you can choose eight by seven for this one or four by three. Again, we're going for the default. Now on the N64, again, we're still gonna choose the original aspect, but there's some widescreen hacks for some games. Um, so you could click on the 16 by nine, like this um, Ocarina of Time, for example, looks pretty good with the widescreen, but not all, games have that so we're just going to go for the four by three here 
And this is the same for Dreamcast too. There's some widescreen hacks for that system as well. All right, so GameCube, same thing. We're gonna choose original, but there's some widescreen hacks for that one as well. So you decide what you wanna do there and then go ahead and click on continue. Handheld games, so Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket. You can configure LCD shaders. So if you want it to look more retro and like it looked on the system itself, you can go ahead and turn this on or off. We kind of clicked on on and off to see how it would look and just made a decision from there. But it's nice that it gives you a preview so you can actually see what it's gonna look like. So for most, we're gonna go ahead and keep it off, but for some systems, you, you'll see that we decide to go, go for it on because it just kind of looked better. The graphics kind of popped a little bit better. So it's really user preference. All right, so now emulation station theme. So you can, there's three themes you can pick from. There's also other ones that you can like download or whatever, but these are the three that you can choose from here. Um, so you can just kind of look at both of them and decide which one you want to choose and then go ahead and click on next. And here it says, here's what EmuDeck will do. So this is all the stuff it's going to do, what it's going to install, configure, customizations that we just made changes to, the resolution that was chosen. Again, you can change this too in the settings if you want. But once you are done with all that, go ahead and click on finish. And now it's going to go ahead and complete your installation. And if you get any pop-ups like for Microsoft Visual C++, go ahead and hit yes so you can proceed with the installation. And this is just showing you go into command center and make sure your controller mode is set to gamepad to make sure the controller and everything uh, works fine and make sure you're launching all your games within Steam or emulation station within Steam. Don't launch them from Armory Crate or anything like that. So that's just noting that here. So go ahead and click next. All right, so cloud saves. So if you have EmuDeck running on multiple devices, you can sync between those devices and bring up your games so you can pick back up where you left off on the other device. So you can decide to do the sync or not, depending on what you choose, go ahead and hit next or copy games. All right, now here it's just talking about the difference between using Steam ROM Manager or playing using Emulation Station. So if you have a ton of games that you don't want all those games to clog up your Steam library, you might want to just put a few select games in Steam and then have the rest in Emulation Station and use that front end to access the majority of your games. So that's kind of just showing you the difference between these two. And now what we want to do is go ahead and skip for now. We don't want to open Steam ROM Manager just yet because we want to go ahead and move over all of our ROMs and our BIOS files. So we're gonna go move on and do that now. All right, now you'll see I have two Explorer windows open. On the left side is my drive that I have all my BIOS files and ROMs that I wanna pull over. And on the right here is the emulation folder that EmuDeck created. So in my case, you know, whatever drive you select it, mine was the C drive. So it's C drive and then emulation is the folder. And this is where you're going to put everything. So you see BIOS, ROM, save, storage, tools, etc. So now we're going to go ahead and move everything over. First, I'm going to move over my ROM. So if you click on the ROMs folder in the emulation directory, you see all these systems. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Whatever system, you know, the ROMs you're trying to move over, you're going to put them in the system folder. So, and for example, N64, if you have N64 ROMs, you're going to put them here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up my ROM folder. And these are the systems that we're going to test for this purpose. Xbox, we're not actually going to do for this. So not sure why, but EmuDeck doesn't actually install the emulator for Xbox. So you kind of have to get that yourself. Um, if you're interested, we can do that in a separate video, but for this purpose, we're just going to do GameCube, PS2, PS3, and Wii U. We would do Switch, but, you know, Nintendo has been kind of cracking down on that, <laughs> so we're just going to do these systems here. So I'm going to start with GameCube, so I'm going to open up my GameCube folder, and then go to the GameCube folder here, and in the... ROMs folder, they also have this systeminfo.txt, so it just gives you some additional information. So as you can see here, it says supported file extensions, so make sure you have 
these file extensions, if you have a different file extension, then the game won't work. So that's just something to note there. And also to help you with this process, there is an emudeck cheat sheet wiki page. So we'll put that down in the description below, but just to give you a look at that. If you bring that up right here, you'll see emudeck cheat sheet. So if you click on that, this is going to give you like a cheat sheet for all the different um, systems. So Arcade and MAME, Atari, Game Engine, Microsoft, Miscellaneous Consoles, Nintendo. So based on whatever systems you're trying to run. Um, so I'll just click on Nintendo, for example. So if you click on Nintendo, you'll see a list of systems, ROM folder name, emulator that will run those games for that system. And then also, we'll get to this in a second, but if any systems require a BIOS file. So, so some systems will require that, PS1, um, Dreamcast, I think. So like I said, you'll see that in this column here. So this is a very, very helpful guide to have. And again, that file format, it'll also show you what file formats you need the ROMs in in order for the games to play. So great resource. Like I said, we'll put that in the description down below. All right, so now, like I said, I'm just gonna go ahead and move everything over. All right, so depending on how many ROMs you had and how large those files were, that could have took some time. So hopefully you grabbed a snack, drink, took a break. Now that all of our ROMs are transferred over, the next thing we want to do is transfer over our BIOS file. So again, check out that emudeck cheat sheet. If, there, if you're trying to emulate any systems that require a BIOS, it'll tell you what you need. Now, just to let you guys know before anybody asks, we can't tell you where to get any ROMs or BIOS files or anything like that. So just know that Google is your friend. Also, these ROMs that we're using are for games that we actually own. All right, so with that all out of the way, let's work on BIOS files. So I'm going to go back here on my drive where I have everything and click into BIOS. Now, again, the systems that we're going to be showing, I only need a BIOS for the PS2. So these are all the possible BIOS files for that. So I'm just going to hit back going back to the main directory, the emulation directory, and then click into BIOS. Now for some of these systems, MAME, Yuzu, for Switch, they have their own folder, but for the most part, you're just gonna pull over your BIOS files for any other system and just drop them right into this main BIOS directory folder here. So just like that. Now, if you want to make sure that you have all the BIOS files that you need and everything is good. Emudeck has a really nice checker. So if you bring up Emudeck again and you scroll down and you see this BIOS checker. So if you click on more info, it'll tell you. So if it's in green, so obviously I moved over the PlayStation 2, you'll see PlayStation 2 BIOS detected. If I added the other ones, you know, hopefully they, they would be green if they are the correct files. But if you notice any are red, that means that they're either not in there or it's not the correct BIOS file. So it's a good idea to go in here and use this BIOS checker to make sure everything is ready to go. All right, guys, so we're almost there. There's just a couple more things that we have to do to make sure the emulators are ready to go, particularly for the ones that I'm using. So for example, CMU for Wii U needs a keys.txt file with keys for the ROMs that you're trying to run. Again, can't tell you where to get those keys. Um, but when you do, like I said, you'll put them in a keys.txt file and where you put that is where CMU is installed. So for my case, it's in C users, my username, emu deck, emulation station, emulators, and in CMU. So here you'll see there's a keys.txt file. There's nothing in there right now, but it shows you the example of what one looks like. So once you have those keys, you're going to go ahead and put them in here and then make sure you save it. And then we're good to go for the CMU emulator. All right, next, another system that I'm trying to emulate is PS3. So the emulator for that is RPCS3. And that needs a PS3 update file. So in order to get that, we'll put the link down below but it takes you to this page here, PS3 system 
software update. And if you scroll down, click on update using a computer and then click on download PS3 update. Now, what you actually wanna do is right click on it and click on save link as and save this somewhere where you can access it. So go ahead and save that. I already have it saved, so I'm gonna hit cancel. So I have it right here. So we need to bring up the RPCS3 emulator. So I'm gonna bring up the start menu, type in RPCS3 to bring that up and go ahead and launch that. And then as you can see, it's telling you to get started, you must first install the PlayStation 3 firmware. That's the file that we just downloaded. And if you need more information or documentation, you can go to this quick start guide. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, I have read the quick start guide and then click on continue. And now once you have the emulator up, RPCS3, you wanna click on file and click on install firmware. So now you just wanna point it to where you save that file. Again, for me, I already have that and it's on my drive here with my ROMs and my BIOS. So I'm gonna click on that. And then as you can see down here in the log, it's installed or installing. Now it says successfully installed. So you can go ahead and don't show me that again if you want to and then click okay. So now you'll see it's compiling PPU modules. So just wait for this to be done. All right, and that's all done. So that's all you need to do for the RPCS3 to be ready to go and run your games. Now, again, these are just the systems and emulators that we're trying to run. If you have other systems and if your games aren't launching, there might be more things that you need to do to get the emulator up and running. Um, again, that link that's going to be down below the emu deck wiki is a really good source also google google is your friend there's plenty of you know emulation guides and videos out there for people that have gotten these emulators to run on windows and walk you through what to do for each one um but for the most case you should be good to go so now that all that's done we're gonna launch steam rom manager so i can get out all this Go back to Emudeck, bring that up, and then here you'll see Steam Raw Manager. So go ahead and launch that. So here are your parsers. So any system that you want to show up in your Steam library, you want to go ahead and select these here. So by default, they're mostly all selected. Um, I recommend just toggling them off and selecting the ones that you want. So whatever systems you're trying to run, select those. Also, again, if you're going to be using Emulation Station as a front end to access um, your ROMs or most of your ROMs, you want to make sure you click on that. Click on Emulators. And then, like I said, just go through and click on any systems that you want to be displayed. All right, so once you have those selected, go ahead and click on Preview. And now we want to add our games to Steam. So you're going to go ahead and click on Parse. And now all those games that you moved over, it's going to find those. And, and again, as well as the emulator, since we selected that emulation station. So here you'll see the games that we added, um, the emulators, emulation station, all that is right here. Now, one thing you might run into is the artwork could be the wrong artwork for whatever game or system you're trying to run. So for example, here you'll see Dolphin, that's the emulator, but it's showing like the game for it. So one way you can fix that is they have little arrows here. Uh, so if you click on that, it'll generally show you like other artwork that it has available. If you don't see any or nothing happens when you click those, just click on the little search magnifier thing here. And then I'll bring up this window. And then you can scroll down and see all the available artwork options for it. Now, I don't see the artwork for the Dolphin emulator, so I'm just gonna type that in and then hit search. And then here you can see Dolphin emulator. So I'm gonna click on that and then I'm gonna hit save and close. So, you know, you can keep scrolling down, see if anything is not quite right. 
So this one, for example, Ratchet and Clank, Tools of Destruction, that's the wrong artwork, so I'm going to do the same thing here. Again, you can click on the arrows, so you see, like, there's different artwork. Still not seeing the right artwork. So I'm just going to click on the little magnifier search thing. And you can scroll or you can just type it in. Still not seeing it here. So I'm just going to go up and type it. Click search. Enter doesn't work. All right, so there you go. You have tools of destruction. So click on it again and hit save and close. And then as you can see, it update it. So again, just go through, see what you need to change. Um, once everything is done, another thing that you can also do, again, is if you don't want all this, all these games or whatever to show up, you can click on exclude and you can click on the ones that you don't want to show up. So say, for example, you don't want Steamy to show up, you can click on that and then you'll see that it grays it out. But I want everything here to show up, so I'm just going to leave that alone. But just to show you, if you want to exclude anything, you can do that here. All right, so once you've done that, now you want to go ahead and click on Save to Steam. So this might take a little bit, depending on how many ROMs you have, or it could be done fairly quickly. In my case, it's done fairly quickly. And so now all this stuff is saved to Steam. So now we can close out of all this, and we can go ahead and launch Steam. All right, so I'm launching it in big picture mode. And so now we're in Steam Big Picture. So go ahead and click on Steam Menu and go to Library and click on Non-Steam Games. So now you'll see all those emulators, all those games are right in here. So you can go ahead and click on the game and launch it right from here. Or I'll show you really quick Emulation Station. So if you want to launch your games from Emulation Station as a front end, you can go ahead and do that. All right, so here is Emulation Station, and you can scroll down. You can see all the systems that you have. You can go into those systems, and then you can launch the games here. Also, if you want to get artwork for your games, if you bring up the menu, one option is you can, so you can go to Scraper, and then you can use this thing called Screen Scraper. There's also the GamesDB. Screen Scraper is pretty good. I'm not going to go through all of this, but if you want to go ahead and use this tool, you can use it. It'll scrape the internet for, you know, artwork for those games and go ahead and put it in Emulation Station. So you have like a nicer view of it. But that's it, guys. That's all there is to it. So now we're going to go ahead and jump into some gameplay so you can see how some of these games and systems run on the ROG Ally. Your regular is today. 
seconds ago, I just killed everyone in the room and then much cartoons. But then, well, you know how I do love a captive audience. Alright guys, there you have it. As you can see, all the games played really well. So the ROG Ally is a great system for emulation. We've been enjoying it a ton. So let us know in the comments below what games and systems you've been playing. Don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. And with that, we'll see you in the next one. Bye!